Hello, ladies and gen gentlemen. Welcome on today Connection Wednesday's webinar, Residence in Ružomberok. Today we'll be presenting me, David Hurčík, and my colleague David Kučera. Hello. If you will have any question, please type it in into the control panel to question tab, and we will do our best to uh, to answer you. We are glad that we obtained a really nice project from our customer in Slovakia. It's a quite a nice residence in one of the Slovak uh, biggest cities, uh, Ružomberok. And we will go through four joints uh, and we will cover uh, basically four topics. And we will not do any modeling today in these joints. We will go through a uh, workflow uh, for the engineer, uh, what to do and what the, uh, is the best practice in these workflows in everyday practice. Uh, I will cover three of them and my colleague David one. Also, we prepared for you a really nice help desk highlight about the pos positioning of the stiffening plates into the joint. So uh, sit tight and enjoy the webinar. First of all, I want to uh, thank uh, I want to thank very much to our partner, to our customer, Betco Project company from Ružomberok, from Slovakia. Uh, it's a design and consulting company. It was founded in 1993 and they have uh, more than 5,400 projects and over 2,000 design structures all, of all kinds. So they are quite experienced and they uh, send us a really nice model, Tecla model, and uh, projects in IDA Statica connection. And we will go through them. First of uh, first um, joint, which we will talk about, it's a frame joint. And I will show you uh, where it is on this nice um, uh, structure. It's a basically a quite large residence. It's a, a concrete found foundation uh, with a lot of walls and uh, uh, slabs, and there is a really nice steel structure. Uh, it consists two main um, girder beams, and um, and uh, some small other parts from steel and we will talk about in the first place uh, about this um, frame joint it's a main column of the main gear uh, uh, frame and these uh, beams you can see that it's a quite a complicated one and we will uh, go right into the application It's this one. Uh, customer uh, designed this uh, from the scratch. Uh, and uh, we want to know if this, uh, uh, this B member is um, stiff because it's a quite huge. Uh, it's even with haunches. And we don't believe uh, that this is a uh, uh, girder joint. We think that the stiffness will be more as a frame and we will go through that. So if we want to calculate the stiffness properly for this beam member B, uh, what to do? In the first place we want we need to get back to Tecla uh, beam side model and explore the length of the member itself. <clears throat> we can do it easily by measuring in this application. If you have some drawings you can measure uh, of course in the drawings. So uh, we need to explore the length of the uh, member for two buckling, uh, buckling uh, uh, in Y and Z direction, and this uh, 
four meters, 300 millimeters will be uh, length of the member to a direction Y and to direction Z, it will be this length. It's about 700 millimeters. Where to input it into Idea Statica connection? Well, it's in the property of the main member B. In, if you turn on the stiffness analysis, here will appear stiffness analysis theoretical length for both directions. So for MY, for 4 meters 0.3 and uh, for direction Z, 0 0.6 meters. This is crucial for the right um, classification. Also, uh, we need to uh, decide if the if the main girder is braced or not, because according to code, there is two options for classification. And if we uh, see the main girder, this blue one, members, and these green members, we can see that this pink or purple members is bracing of the main girder. So the girder is braced, and we need to uh, check it in the code setup here check settings braced system so let me check it out and confirm now uh, the classification will be done in the right way and the last thing uh, these are the loads for um, uh, stress strain analysis uh, we have a whole bunch of them all six uh, internal forces but this is not um, this is not 100% right if I want to calculate stiffness analysis and we need to do that uh, something with this first of all I will copy this load effect and leave it as it is because I, I need to, or I want to calculate the interaction, interaction of all internal forces. In the second step, I will create a copy and I will clear uh, unnecessary internal forces. I will leave only bending moment and uh, corresponding shear force. And in the last step, I will clear the corresponding shear force and I will leave only bending moment around the Y axis then I can calculate uh, the stiffness. Uh, I prepared this in advance because it took a while. So here I have the results and we can explore them. Uh, there is a rotational stiffness, so let's go through it. You can see that we have three uh, results because we have three load effects. Uh, uh, this one is only low, uh, only bending moment, this one is bending moment and the um, uh, shear force, and this one is interaction of all internal forces. And you can see that the result is different because in the interaction uh, the behavior is slightly different. So what now? What How, how to decide which um, uh, result is uh, the most inter important for us? Uh, it's interesting that it's semi-rigid. It's not rigid, it's not pinned. Uh, so the best way is to take uh, into account uh, the uh, stiffness. Uh, okay, we are with our uh, uh, designed bending moment uh, somewhere here at the bottom part of the elastic part of the behavior. behavior. So I will definitely took the um, the initial rotational stiffness and maybe the best one will be this the smallest one and then I will input it back to my finite element analysis model to global one I will recalculate the whole model uh, check out the um, redistribution of the internal forces and probably I will uh, check once more strain uh, strain uh, this uh, stress and strain analysis in Idea Statica connection with slightly changed internal forces uh, to know if the all uh, welds, bolts and plates passed the code check. 
So let's get back to presentation and we will do small recap. We need to insert uh, length of the members. We need to check if the system is braced. We need to write and we need to define right uh, in the right way loads. We need to use engineering judgment, decide which, uh, which stiffness we will take into account, recalculate the internal forces and finite element analysis tool, uh, do the revision of the code checks uh, for the beams and then do the revision of the stress strain analysis for the joint in idea statica connection great let's uh, do the second joint second workflow uh, this is anchoring this is anchoring of our main girder i will show it to you in the, uh, in the model is somewhere here uh, here is the main girder um, anchored to the a concrete wall at the, at the two points. So let's talk, let's talk about it a little bit. Um, I will open the project. Here we have it. First note, I want to point out uh, uh, that in the base plate operation, we can define the offset of the main concrete block in a few steps, you know, few possibilities. Uh, offset to all edges in it will be the same or the different, and that's it. We can define the same geometry as the uh, uh, as as the uh, wall in the model. So 0, 0, 50, and 100, and 500, sorry. And we have the same model like in the reality. We can calculate it. And after calculation, we see that there is a problem with anchors. And why? Oh, because we will, we, Idea Statica Connection calculates even with the influence of the edge of the concrete block. And we can see that it's a little bit pro problematic uh, because the concrete cones are influenced with the edges from the left, from the right, and from the top. Uh, so practically there is no concrete cone at all because it's too small, the concrete block. So what now? I'm not able to design it here and then uh, I will use another option. I will turn off the concrete breakout resistance because I'm not, it's not um, suitable to use it here. Let's click OK and let's calculate it again. And we will see in a few seconds uh, the result. Now the anchors are OK. Why? Because uh, we don't calculate the concrete cone. The IDA Statica connection uh, did the assessment of the shear and tension force in the anchor only. We have here our tension force, we have here a resultant of shear force in the anchor, and we, uh, we applications simply uh, uh, did the assessment of the um, of the uh, of the anchor, nothing more. No concrete is involved in these checks, and that's enough for me right now uh, because I'm satisfied. But what is the next step? Because I'm interested in concrete also. Uh, we will do some small recap right now. We can calculate concrete breakout resistance, uh, but it's useless right now, so uncheck it. Anchors check, basic tension and shear only. We are satisfied. We are satisfied also with plates and, and weld check. And then we can put the anchors results into the idea statica detail and do the concrete checks, concrete checks in idea statica detail. Are you confused? Don't be, we will go through that. In our other application, Idea Statica Detail, uh, we can uh, insert as uh, external load effect um, uh, effects from as uh, from Idea Statica connection like tension and shear force and something other. And if you can see, this is the uh, this is the picture from uh, 
uh, iviastatica detail here we have our connection our anchoring and for example if we print out this train without reinforcement there is a nice view on the concrete cone and if we go further this is the second anchoring of the main uh, uh, girder uh, we can compare the results from the isostatica connection. We have a contact stress in the base plate, and in the extreme there is a slightly below one, uh, sorry, 10 megapascals in the pressure. And in the isostatica detail, we can uh, uh, print out the stress in concrete, and it's almost the same. And it's a quite nice to have this comparison here. And my point is that this wall will be covered by my um, by my colleague uh, in next um, next week in another webinar and uh, please if you are interested uh, uh, join in because you have a chance to um, to win this really nice um, 3d printed uh, model of uh, concrete uh, part. Uh, who will raise the best question for this webinar uh, next week will be winner. So join in, it will be really interesting. Okay, uh, next one. This is a platform joint, uh, also interesting one, because it's not so so clearly to see what's going on there. Uh, I will show you here in the main construction. This is the beam which I'm interested in and this is the joint. And you can see that this beam is slightly uh, non-standard because here is a platform joint, here is another connection from another beam, here is a, a, a steel, oh sorry, a concrete wall and here is another steel connection fin plate. Okay, we have a uh, we have the project here, and as you can see, uh, engineer uh, probably wants it to have here a, a pin connection because we have only shear force. If we have pin connection, we need to uh, we need to uh, place the shear force into right position. We need to place the shear force at the center of the bolts, probably somewhere here. So I will do that. I will shift the uh, position uh, to right position here, 150 millimeters. That's one thing. Another thing is that I'm not sure if this is really pinned connection because you can see there are some stiffeners and a lot of welds, etc. So, what to do? Uh, definitely, we will do the uh, we will do the stiffness analysis again. And what do you, probably you will know that right now that we need some lengths, and we can measure it, of course. I will show you the picture. We can measure it. Uh, it's a, again for both directions uh, to different values. So I will just input it here in the parameters of the of the um, uh, member B1. I can input it here, then I can separate the, uh, um, I can prepare my load effect and while I don't have the bending moment I can insert 10 kN meters uh, because the stiffness is, uh, uh, it depends on the design not on the external loads. So I can input 10 and then I can check it and if we uh, go through the result we can see that this, not, this joint is not uh, really pinned, it's semi-rigid and 
we will need to recalculate it in our global fine element model with different stiffness. So again, there should be a recalculation and uh, engineering judgment, a revision of the code checks for the beams because we have some redistribution of internal forces, uh, take care of the position of the shear force for the definition of this joint and do uh, another stress strain analysis for this joint. And that's all from my side right now. I will pass the words to my colleague David. Hello everyone, thank you. So we can continue. From customer project, we will investigate another joint, this one. Uh, let me show you in our 3D model where this connection is located. So it is repeated many times. For instance, it's here or here in the upper part of the structure. For this connection, we will explain buckling results in IDEA Statica. But before we skip into the software, let's have a little bit of theory about buckling. Buckling is one kind of analysis which IDEA Statica offers to you next to uh, capacity design or stiffness analysis. IDEA Statica is able to perform linear buckling analysis and provide the user factor of the critical load and buckling shapes. This is really very important sentence. So what does it mean? IDEA Statica doesn't provide buckling check. The final decision depends on you as responsible engineers, but we can a little bit help you with the decision. And the second thing, IDEA Statica is able to perform geometrically linear analysis. So it doesn't take into account non-linear analysis with imperfections. This one is very important for FinWalt members where geometrically linear analysis isn't sufficient. And uh, this topic about FinWalt members is covered on our web in FAQ section. So if you are interested, please visit our web and check it. Today we have project uh, in Eurocode. So in Eurocode in 1993, 1.1 clause 5.2.1, there is the limit value 15. So what is under the limit uh, is uh, unsatisfactory, but this limit is for members, not for the joints, for the connections. But for the joints and connections, the codes don't give sufficient guidance. So therefore, it is up to you as an engineers. But uh, we can help you a little bit. So it's very important to realize what kind of buckling we have in the structure. We can talk about global buckling and uh, local buckling. What does it mean, global buckling? Let's have a look on the figure below where we have column and one member, and this member is connected by uh, fin plate to column. So 
in this case it's clearly visible that uh, we are talking about buckling of the whole member because plate is elongation of the member and in this case the limit value should be definitely 15. Then we have local buckling. Again, let's have a look on the pictures below. In this case, we are talking about individual plates. It means stiffeners or parts of the sections, web of the column in this case. And in this case, uh, or for these cases, IDEA Statica, our university team uh, researched that you can use limit value free. But please be very careful about it because uh, this limit value is not in the code and application depends on you as an engineer. So it depends on your engineering judgment. Finally, the results of buckling uh, in IDEA Statica connection isn't a definite check. We don't provide buckling check. The codes don't give sufficient guidance. The assessment requires engineering judgment and IDEA Statica provides unique tools which are not available in standard design software. Now let's skip into the software for our joint. I have calculated this connection for you in advance. We can check it a little bit. It is the one I showed you before. And what to do to display buckling results? We go to the tab check. I will switch on buckling shape and go to the tab buckling. We can display mesh if we want and I can make it for you a little bit deformed. Let's say 50. Sorry, I have to switch on the formation. Yeah, that's better. So now you can see what are the results. We provide for you buckling shape and factor of the critical load. In this case, we have first buckling shape with the uh, factor of the critical load 21.1. And we can see that the problem occurs in a plate. If you want, of course, you can switch uh, buckling shapes. We can display the third one, the second one, or whatever you want. So we can go back to the first one. And we have a factor of the critical load 21.1. So what does it mean? Check depends on you. But we can go back to presentation. And you can see that in this case, or in our case of our example, the plate is elongation of the member. So definitely in this case, we are talking about global buckling and the limit value should be 15. Let's have a look at it. And we have 21.1. So we can decide that this check, that this buckling check is okay for us. Now let's go back to presentation. Here it is. And we can summarize 
our knowledge about buckling. Very important thing about buckling. Idea Statica doesn't provide check. This check depends on your engineering judgment. And for proper decision about limits, you as an engineers have to take into account topology of your structure, boundary conditions, or anything else. But we can help you. We provide for you unique tools, which are not available in standard design softwares. And now uh, we can go on. And here we have a help desk highlight. We are still in the same project, uh, but just now I won't uh, show it in 3D model. You can, we can directly skip into the software. I prepared for you this connection. And just now we will talk about uh, this plate, this one. You can notice that the plate was placed uh, by using precise coordinates. Uh, sorry, this one's in each axis. It's not a bad idea, just uh, one option. And now let's have a look what will happen. Uh, what will happen if we change, uh, let's say, thickness of the plate? Let's display another view. This one. So here is our plate. With right mouse button, I can change uh, by scrolling the roll of the mouse the thickness. So 18, 20, we can go higher, 30, I can end it. And just now it's visible. I can uh, switch to transparent mode. And you can see that our plate is in clash with the another one. And that's a mistake. It's uh, not very good. So in this, in this case, we should repair the coordinates manually, but this is very laborious. So in the most of the cases, you can take advantage of automatic positioning of the plates. Let's check together how to do it. We can leave this project and I can Copy it. We will work with uh, these three operations, this one, this one, and the third one. Just now I will switch off these operations. And let's copy the plate. Let's switch it on and instead of using precise coordinates i will change uh, the origin the origin of the of the plate so i want this plate to be on this one let's uh, switch sorry switch the plate and select which one it is this is this one and let's change the type of the plate to doubler. We can see that something happened and uh, switch the location and that's it. I think the plate, uh, the, the thickness, the original thickness of the plate was 15. So let's set the 15 and the plate was uh, connected to this one by bolts. So let's switch off the welds. Uh, yes, the welds. And let's have a look at it. Yes, it's there. Just now we can copy uh, the cut. 
let's switch it on and we won't cut member m4 by the new plate this one and the welds will be all around and finally let's copy the bolts it's hidden in the grid operation let's switch it on something happened and let's repair the plates which are connected so uh, pick by mouse cursor this plate and the second one and that's it very easy so let's check it now what will happen so what will happen if we change the thickness of the plate again let's click on the plate by right mouse button and uh, by rolling of the wheel we can change the thickness so i hope it's visible and uh, you can see that now it's automatic we don't have to change uh, the positions sorry the positions of the plate as it was before we speed up the process of modeling let's go back to the presentation and let's make a quick summary in the most of the cases it's better to take uh, advantage of automatic positioning and instead of um, these precise coordinates you can use we can select origin of the plate and then you can very easy select where the plate should be positioned so that's all from me and i can pass the word to vitya again thank you thank you david for your help desk highlight and for your joint about the buckling and we are slightly uh, slightly behind our time schedule so let's skip the questions uh, skip the questions and answers we covered all your questions during um, the webinar uh, by um, uh, answers in the tab and I will uh, I will ask you after the webinar please fill in the short survey you can tell us uh, uh, your feedback A recording will be as usual available tomorrow in our uh, youtube channel or at our webinars tab at home page uh, you can visit our resource center to see all things about local and global buckling all things about stiffness etc next webinars uh, the one that i already told you next week uh, 22nd of may cast in situ wall in rujon baroque and we will talk about uh, uh, how to in, how to input the uh, load effects or um, results from idea statica connection into idea statica detail and use it as an input for designing the uh, concrete wall and the second interesting uh, 29th of may another connection wednesdays this time Battersea power station from london from our united kingdom team so thank you very much for your attention today. I hope that you like it and we will see each other in a few weeks. Thank you and have a nice day.